Hello everyone, welcome back to my class. Today we will start module number 6. Okay, in module 5 we talked about interference and in module 6 uh, we will again talk about interference, but in this module we will uh, particularly talk about multiple beam interference and just to uh, clarify the difference. In module 5 we uh, uh, talked about uh, two beam uh, interference there we took a thin film and then we considered only first two reflected and first two transmitted rays and there we talked about interference between the two. Here we will take multiple reflected and multiple transmitted rays and, and the interference between reflected rays would be considered as well as the interference among uh, transmitted rays would be considered and there we will talk about the condition of maxima and minima. Okay, and thereafter fabry perot interferometer would be discussed. And at last, I will introduce uh, the concept of coherence here. Yeah. Now, let us start with a multiple beam interference here. Yeah. Now, uh, to realize multiple uh, beams, what do we do is that we take a thin glass plate or thin film, which is shown by uh, this shaded color here. And uh, a light beam is launched of amplitude E naught here at this interface. And as we discussed earlier also, a part of the rays get reflected and part get transmitted. Okay. Here in this uh, figure, this shaded region is uh, glass which have uh, say some refractive index n, while the outside region it is air, yeah, n is equal to 1 here in outside medium. Okay. This film is kept in air. Okay. Now, the first ray which is being launched on the interface of amplitude E naught, this ray suffers reflection at this interface and here we have assumed that amplitude reflection coefficient is a small r and this amplitude reflection coefficient tells us about the fraction, uh, fraction amplitude which got reflected at this interface. Okay. Therefore, the amplitude of the ray which will be reflected would be equal to E naught which is our initial amplitude into this amplitude reflection coefficient which is small r. Okay. In the same way, we have assumed that the amplitude transmission coefficient in uh, the film is small t okay. and therefore, the fraction of the amplitude which is transmitted in this experiment is E naught into small t. Okay. Now, the reflection coefficient within the film is assumed to be r prime. Okay. r prime is fraction amplitude reflected and this is for a wave incident from film to air. Yeah. r is ref amplitude reflection coefficient for ray which is made to incident from air to film but r prime is the amplitude reflection coefficient from film to air it is opposite and we have already studied stokes uh, relations which relates r with r prime and the relation is given by equation number 1 here yeah which says that r is equal to minus r prime there is 180 degree phase difference between the these two amplitude reflection coefficients okay small t is the amplitude transmission coefficient from air into film. Similarly, t prime is the again transmission coefficient from film to air. Okay. Therefore, it is fraction of the amplitude of a wave transmitted when the wave leaves the film yeah. and this is shown here. Yeah. When this ray falls at this interface, a part get transmitted and a part get reflected. Within the film, reflection coefficient is r prime. Therefore, the total reflected amplitude is incident amplitude into r prime and incident amplitude is e naught t and therefore, the total amplitude would be e naught t into r prime. Similarly, the transmitted amplitude would be e naught t into t prime. Why? Because e naught t is our incident amplitude which is given here and then we will have to multiply it with the transmission coefficient which is t prime. Okay, this t prime is transmission coefficient from film to air and if you multiply this with t prime you get this relation. Okay, e naught t t prime is the amplitude which 
get reflected, so re transmitted. And this is the first transmitted beam, okay. And then we keep on multiplying the relevant transmission and reflection coefficient, and this will give us the various orders of reflection and transmission amplitudes. Yeah, and these are uh, given here with this relation. This this is the amplitude of the first reflected way. This is the amplitude of the second reflected way. This is the amplitude of the third reflected way. Therefore, we call this the first reflection as E1 r, the second reflection as E2 r, the third reflected beam as E3 r and so on. And similarly, on the transmitted part, the first transmitted wave is called E1 t, the second is called E2 t, the third is called E3 t. And fourth is called E 4 t and so on and so forth here. Yeah. There will be infinite many such reflections because at each interface the wave the beam will suffer par partial reflection and partial transmission and it will keep on going. And here we have also assumed that the film th this thin film is lossless it is not absorbing any uh, amplitude. Okay. Now, Therefore, we will get a number of reflected rays and a number of transmitted wave okay. and this is what exactly is written here. The scalar amplitudes of the reflected waves which are designated as E 1 r, E 2 r, E 3 r, it would be the, uh, these are the reflected wave and their uh, uh, respective magnitudes are E naught r, then E naught t r prime, t prime, then E naught t r prime to the power 3 into t, t prime and so on and so forth. Yeah. Similarly, on the transmitted part, if transmitted beams are E 1 t, E 2 t, E 3 t, E3 t, then their respective magnitude would be given by these three terms okay, respectively. Okay. Now, each ray bears a fixed phase relationship to all other reflected rays. Okay, because each ray you see here in this figure, uh, the first reflection is appearing and this reflected part is not going inside the film, but while the second reflection which is E 2 r is traversing the thickness of the film twice. Okay, therefore, each reflection, each next reflection is traversing the thickness of the film twice. Okay, and therefore, there is a certain phase relationship between all these rays here, yeah, both uh, transmitted and reflected. Okay. Now, all these uh, phase differences arises from a combination of optical path length differences and phase shift occurring at various reflection. Okay. Now, the phase relationship which reflected rays as well as transmitted rays develops it has two contribution. The first contribution is optical path length differences because the different reflected ray they traverse different thickness of the film. Similarly, different transmitted waves they travel different thicknesses of the film and therefore, they, they have a certain phase relationship and this thickness of the film appears in path length differences. Okay, this is the first contribution in the uh, total phase. The second contribution in the total phase arises out of reflections, okay, because we know when a wave travels from a rarer medium to denser medium, the reflection there contributes 180 degree phase shift. Okay. Therefore, few reflections there in the thin film is of this nature where the wave sees 180 degree phase shift and few reflections are there where the wave does not see this 180 degree phase shift and that these two phase shift were first due to the path length difference and second due to the, the reflection these two phases get, uh, get get accumulated and this give the resultant phase and this resultant phase is seen among different uh, transmitted and reflected rays. Okay. Now, all these transmitted and reflected rays as can be seen in this figure they all are getting generated from the wave of amplitude E naught. Okay. One single beam is falling and it is 
generating the different orders of transmission and reflected reflections yeah we see different transmitted beams and different reflected beams and they all have their origin in the first beam which is of magnitude e naught and since they all are generating from the same source they all are mutually coherent okay and therefore they will interfere and give some uh, sustain interference fringe pattern okay now we can calculate the optical path length difference how to calculate take two adjacent rays and then suppose this is our film and the rays is falling like this one ray will go down and then will will get reflected from here and then it will go in this direction the first reflection would happen here now to calculate the path difference between the two ray we will have to draw perpendicular here then calculate these two path and then subtract it from this path and this will give the path length difference we have uh, which we have already calculated okay and this optical path length length would be 2 nfd cos theta t where d is the thickness okay d is the thickness of the film and nf is assumed to be the refractive index of the film okay nf is the refractive index of the film and d is its thickness okay if these two quantities are known and angle of incidence is known then we can easily calculate the path length difference between the adjacent rays yeah and this is equal to 2 nfd cos theta t theta t is the angle of transmission okay this is theta t okay now all the waves except for the first which is e1 r undergo an odd number of reflection within the film how to ensure this now you again see the same picture this is our film and this is the wave which is falling on the film and this is the first reflection and then a partial transmission is there again reflection again transmission reflection again reflection transmission reflection and so on okay now this is your uh, first reflected ray this is your second reflection this is our third reflection now this statement says all the wave except for the first which is e1 r e1 r is given here undergo an odd number of reflections now let us see the first reflection for e2 r this is the only reflection which is happening which is one for e3 r this is the first reflection and this is the uh, second reflection and this is the third reflection it, it means e2 r is undergoing one reflection e3 r is going three reflection and similarly e4 r it undergo it undergoes five reflection yeah you can draw uh, multiple reflections and realize this okay and we see that the apart from e1 r all other waves they undergo odd number of reflection now at each internal reflection the component of the field parallel to the plane of incidence changes by either 0 or pi this is known yeah if a wave is falling at the interface and if the field is in the plane of the paper because the uh, the plane of the paper will contain the incident ray the interface and the point of incid incidence and such a plane is called plane of incidence yeah okay i repeat plane of incidence contains the incident ray the point of incidence and normal to the interface okay and if the elec uh, uh, electric field of the incoming wave is in uh, this plane then its phase changes either by 0 or pi and it depends whether the ang uh, the internal incidence angle is less than theta c or not theta c is critical angle now the component of the field perpendicular to the plane of incidence suffers no change in phase or internal reflection when theta is less than theta c now the uh, now we are launching a wave it has certain polarization 
and the first statement said that the component of the polarization which is in the plane of incidence it will change in phase by 0 or pi and it depends upon the internal incidence angle. Similarly, the component of the field which is perpendicular to the plane of incidence it will suffer no change in phase or internal reflection. Okay. Then from these two statement what we can conclude is that no relative change in phase among these wave results from an odd number of such reflections. Okay. Uh, let me reframe it. E 1 r is the reflection when the wave fall on the this film interface from air. First interface separating the rarer medium from the denser medium and the wave is coming from the rarer medium therefore, E 1 r will suffer a phase shift of pi. Now, in E 2 r it, it uh, goes to it suffers only one reflection. Okay. Similarly, E 3 r it suffers three reflection there are odd number of reflection. Then therefore, the E 2 r will be in phase with E 3 r. Similarly, E 3 r will be in phase with E 4 r, okay. but there is no uh, comment on, on whether E 1 r is in phase with E 2 r. Okay. But till now, we have not talked about the phase which the wave accumulate due to the path difference. We are just talking about the phase, phase the wave accumulate due to the reflections. Okay. Now, let us move in uh, to uh, next slide and in this slide we take into account the phase contribution due to the optical path length differences. Okay. Now, uh, before taking the optical path length difference into account, let us uh, divide this case into two part. Okay. Now, this optical path length con consideration is divided in two part. The in first part, the optical path length difference is assumed to be integral multiple of wavelength. Okay. Now, if optical path difference is integral multiple of wavelength, then the second third, fourth and successive waves will all be in phase. Why do I say so? Now, this is our film, this is the incident wave, this is the first reflection reflected wave and this is the second reflected wave. Similarly, this one is the third one and so on we can draw several like this. Now, if the optical path length difference is integral multiple of wavelength, then E 2 r, E 3 r, E 4 r would be in phase if we only consider the phase contribution from the optical path length difference. Okay. This is very clear. Yeah. Since optical path length difference is integral multiple of wavelength or phase difference is integral multiple of 2 pi. Therefore, E 2 r, E 3 r, F E 4 r, E 5 r they all would be in phase. Okay. Now, we see that the first wave E 1 r it falls on the interface and then the first reflection is there and which due to reflection suffer a phase shift of pi. Now, here it is internal reflection it is a denser medium and here it is a rarer medium. Therefore, there would be no phase difference and then E 2 r uh, with respect to the E 1 r it will have 0 phase difference. Okay. Let us represent del phase difference by del and del is equal to 0 here for E 2 r with respect to E 1 r the incident one. Why? Because this path difference is integral multiple of wavelength. Okay, no extra uh, phase is accumulated due to the path length difference. Okay. Similarly, E 3 r the path length difference between E 2 r and E 3 r is integral multiple of 
lambda therefore phase difference between an E 2 r and E 3 r would again be z again be 0 because all the reflections the rays is starting from E 1 E naught then it is going in this direction in this direction again in this direction and this direction and then going in the E 3 r. Therefore, three reflections happened here and all three reflections are internal and here the reflection is happening at, at denser to rarer medium boundary and which does not contribute to any phase here and therefore, the total phase difference would be 0. Okay? The phase difference between E 1 r and E 2 r is pi because E 1 r itself accumulate a phase pi pi due to the reflection E 2 r it does not accumulate extra phase. Okay? E 3 r it also does not accumulate an any extra phase. Similarly, E 4 r it also have a phase difference of 0. It means E 2 r, E 3 r, E 4 r, E 5 r they all would be in phase okay? while E 1 r would be out of phase by 180 degree with respect to E 2 r, E 3 r, E 4 r and so on. Okay? Therefore, due to this r is equal to minus r prime relation the Stoke relation we have this extra phase difference of pi. Okay? Now, since all the reflected rays are coming here in this direction on the first part of the uh, this thin film, to calculate the overall disturbance we will add up the to uh, reflection amplitudes and total reflection amplitude let us assume it is designated by E naught r it would be represented by E naught into r and then we will have to add up all these contributions. Yeah? We will add uh, E naught into r plus E naught t r prime t prime then we will add up this add them up and then exercise equation number 1 which is r is equal to minus r prime. If you do this then we get equation number 3. Okay? You see in equation number 3 on right hand side there is no r prime because r prime is replaced by minus r. Okay? Once it is done then we see that E naught t r t prime is common in all this term therefore, it can be taken out and what is left is here in this bracket. Okay? Now, you see that this is a uh, GP geometric progression. Okay? And we know how to add a geometric progression. We used our uh, knowledge of GP here, added them up and we have this final relation for the total reflected amplitude. Okay? Now, the uh, principle of reversibility also gave another Stokes relation and which is T T prime is equal to 1 minus R square. Now, if you put T T prime which is here in the numerator. Uh, if you replace T T prime by 1 minus R square, then uh, uh, this is what you get here yeah, E naught R minus R E naught R T T prime is 1 minus R square and in the denominator 2 we have 1 minus R square this will go away okay? and this 2 will go away and we are left with 0 on the right hand side and therefore, the total reflected amplitude is equal to 0. Okay? I repeat if the part difference contribution is such that that the uh, optical part difference is integral multiple of lambda then in multiple beam interference the resultant electric field distribution amplitude is equal to 0. Now, thus when optical path length difference is integral multiple of lambda the second, third and fourth th these waves uh, successive waves they exactly cancel the first reflected wave okay? and therefore, we will, got, we will not get any light in the reflected arm. Okay? All the energies would be transmitted, yeah? this is the film we launched some light and there is nothing in the reflected arm everything is getting transmitted whole energy will appear here unless there is some absorption within the film.
okay. And vector rate can be considered like this, this is the amplitude of the first in wave or first reflection, okay. This is the amplitude of the second reflection, this is the third and so on and so forth. The magnitude is decreasing because on successive reflection only uh, a smaller part goes into the reflected arm and therefore, they all add up when cap lambda is m lambda and the resultant is 0. Okay. Now, let us consider the second case of optical path length difference, where we assume that optical path length difference is half integral multiple of lambda. Okay. Now, in this case what will happen? Now, the first and second rays are in phase. How? Let us again draw the picture. This is the wave which is falling on the film and this is the transmitted wave, this is the first reflection which is E 1 r, again reflection transmission, if this is our E 2 r and this is our E 3 r okay. and similarly here we have E 1 t, E, t, E 2 t and so on. Yeah. Now, what we are saying is that the optical path length difference be between E 1 r and E 2 r now is equal to half integral multiple of wavelength. It means the corresponding phase difference is pi. Okay. Now, for E 2 r del is equal to pi now okay. and for E 1 r we know del is already pi because of the reflection. Okay. It means E 1 r and E 2 r in phase. What about E 3 r? E 3 r is now e, for E 3 r the wave has the beam has to travel one more uh, two time two times more the thickness. He, therefore, one more phase will be added here pi plus pi. First pi is due to uh, this optical path length difference the due to the first uh, traversal second, first two traversal within the film thickness and the second pi is due to the second two traversal between the film in the film. Okay. This is the first pi and this is the second pi. The first pi again I repeat first pi is due to the optical path length difference when the be beam traverses the film thickness twice for the first time. Second pi is due to the optical path length difference uh, due to the traversal of the beam between the film thickness twice again. Okay. Now, we, you see that the E 2 r is out of phase with E 3 r. Similarly, if the beam travels once more this whole uh, films twice, then what we see is that E 4 r would be again out of phase with respect to E 3 r. Why? Because an extra pi will again get added there. Okay. If you talk in terms of optical path difference, then path difference here is lambda by 2. In this case, lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2, okay, let me write it here, phase or path length difference, okay, cap lambda, delta cap lambda. Yeah. I will write phase or path length difference for E 1 r, E 2 r, E 3 r, E 4 r, the first four. E 1 r accumulates a phase difference of pi, pi due to reflection or path length difference of lambda by 2 due to reflection. Okay. This is cap lambda, delta cap lambda which is difference in the optical path length. Okay. E 2 r, it uh, travels within the film twice okay. and therefore, due to the uh, optical path length uh, difference contribution, it accumulates a phase difference of pi or part difference of lambda by 2. Okay, there is uh, no contribution from the reflection for E 2 r. Similarly, E 3 th r, it before coming out of the film, E 3 r travels the, the film 4 times. Okay, therefore, it would be 1 pi for uh, 2 traversal, 1 again extra pi for next 2 traversal. 4 traversal is equal to 2 pi and similarly here lambda by 2 plus lambda by 2. E 4 pi, it is traveling 6 times in the film. Therefore, first two traversal contributes pi, second two 
again pi and the last two again pi. Similarly, in path length difference we will have 3 lambda by 2. Then what you see is that E 3 r and E 4 r are out of phase by pi r the path length difference is lambda by 2. Similarly, E 2 and E 3 they are out of phase by pi r the path length difference is again lambda by 2 while first two E 1 r and E 2 r the phase difference is 0 path difference is also 0. It means E 1 and E 2 r would now be in phase while other would not the other E, e, e 2 r would be out of phase with E 3 E 3 r would be out of phase with E 4 and so on and this is what is written here. Now, the first and second rays are in phase and all other adjacent waves are lambda by 2 out of phase that is second is out of phase with the third, third is out of phase with the fourth and so on. Okay. Therefore, the resultant scalar amplitude now which is written here, now you see that these two are in phase therefore, they are added while this is out of phase with this. Yeah. E 2 is out of E 3 is out of phase with E 2 therefore, we have minus sign. Similarly, E 4 is E 4 r is out of phase with E 3 r therefore, a plus sign here yeah here we have minus here plus and so on yeah each next term will have different sign. Okay. With this we added all this term okay. And uh, perform the geometrical sum. The since the this series is in GP, then we added them up, and this is the relation which we get ultimately. Again, exercise Stokes relations, which is T T prime is equal to one minus R square, and this uh, modifies the equation number seven, and this is equation number eight. Okay, this is the final expression of the uh, the resultant uh, scalar amplitude of uh, reflected beam okay now in this relation if from this relation if you want to calculate irradiance then you know irradiance is e naught r square by 2 and from here we got this expression of irradiance r intensity okay of the reflected uh, light okay and in this case if you want to see what exactly is happening vectorially and then you see that this is the contribution from the first uh, reflected ray, this is the contribution from the second ray and you see that 1 and 2 they are pointing in the same direction, they are in phase although their magnitudes are dif different and which is supposed to be uh, which is very much obvious why the second magnitude would be uh, smaller than the first one. Similarly, the E 3 is also smaller than 2, but 3 is opposing uh, up, uh, dire is directed in the opposite direction. Okay, because it is out of phase with respect to 2 by pi degree. Similarly, 4 is out of phase with respect to 3 by pi, similarly 5 and 6 and so on. Yeah. Now, if you add them uh, up, then we will have this resultant. This is a bigger non-zero amplitude. Okay. Now, the same thing can be done in a complex representation very easily. How to do in a comp uh, these things in the complex representation. We know a wave in the complex representation is written as follows E is equal to E naught e to the power i omega t minus k into z. Okay. Z is the direction of the propagation you as we, you say. Yeah. Now, here what we assume is that the, the first reflected wave which is represented by E 1 r tilde, it is represented by E naught r into the e to the power i omega t, where r is the coefficient of amplitude reflection, okay, amplitude coefficient of reflection. Now, uh, we, uh, have, we have assumed that this part is not there for E 1 r, okay, the reference is taken in such a way that E the time component is only there here in the E 1 r, while in E 2 r which is the second ref, uh, reflected uh, beam, it traverses through the thickness of the film, it means it will accumulate some phase okay. and to take into account of this phase, we have incorporated this phase term del, which incorporate 
two traversal into the film yeah this is the film the rays is coming in it going once into the film and then twice into the film the f the two traversal are embedded here in this phase del okay therefore the second reflected ray it will have amplitude since it is traversing through the film twice therefore two uh, transmission coefficient one reflection is happening here therefore one reflection coefficient it for i omega t is there already in the uh, incoming wave but apart from this we have a phase difference del this phase difference is between e2 r and e1 r okay similarly for third reflected ray we have e naught then the extra transmission and reflection uh, uh, coefficients are there which is here in the amplitude part but apart from this we have twice of del because the this is e2 r and the for the third e reflection the wave again have to travel through the thin film twice it will again add up the phase del okay therefore overall phase of e3 r with respect to e1 r would be twice of del okay similarly for nth reflected wave the phase would be n minus 1 into del okay and the relevant number of uh, transmission and ref reflection coefficients are also appearing here in the amplitude part okay and e not e to the power i omega t as i said before it is the incident wave okay and this phase del 2 del 2 n minus 1 del are the contribution of the phase arising from the optical path length difference between the adjacent rays now the resultant scalar wave would be sum of all these waves okay let us sum them up and substitute for e1 r e2 r e3 r and this is the final big expression which we get in form of equation 10 this gives the resultant disturbance or resultant amplitude in the reflected part okay now again yeah remember the del is optical path length difference between adjacent ray now doing some mathematics leads to equation number 11 okay and we see again that in this parenthesis these terms are in gp okay and if r prime is square e to the power i delta modulus is less than 1 and if th uh, there are infinite many reflected rays then the series given in this parenthesis it converges yeah and the resultant can be written here by can be given by equation number 12 okay we just added up uh, this geometrical progression okay now we will use the stokes relation the two stokes relation are r is equal to minus r prime and tt prime is equal to 1 minus r square and this uh, slightly modified uh, the equation number 12 and this uh, modified equation is given by equation number 13 okay let us now calculate the intensity or irradiance the reflected flux density <coughs> would be given by e r tilde into e r tilde star by 2 star means complex conjugate yeah if you do this then slight modification again gives us equation number 15 okay where this term i i is the incident uh, flux density which is given by e naught square by 2. Now once the reflected amplitudes are calculated let us again do the same for transmitted amplitude okay. We will start uh, in the complex representation uh, followed the same thing what we did with the reflected one added them up and the total transmitted uh, amplitude in complex representation is given here by equation number 16. Now if you add them then you will see that we get e to the power i del by 2 extra in equation number 16 okay and since we are interested in irradiance, irradiance means we will uh, multiply E t with its complex conjugate therefore the phase part will any way go away okay and therefore this term is neglected here in equation number 16 it will not contribute to the irradiance okay and it is deliberately omitted okay it contributes 
to the fact that there is a phase difference of pi by 2 between the reflected and transmitted wave. Okay? The reflected and transmitted wave has a phase difference of pi by 2 and there only this phase part appear, but while considering a radiance or intensity it has a no meaning and therefore, it is deliberately omitted. Now, in the transmitted arm let us calculate the irradiance which is E t tilde into E t tilde star which is of course, complex conjugate by 2 yeah. and the expression for radi irradiance is this and to simplify it let us say represent cos in terms of sin. Okay. We know that cos del is equal to 1 minus 2 sin square del by 2 using this formula in the equation 17 here while the irradiance expression for reflected ray is given by equation number 18 here, yeah, wherein we have just expressed cos delta in terms of sin del by 2. Yeah. Now, in equation 18 and 19 there are important relations here. Yeah. In this expression what do you see is that they are very bulky, okay. but there are certain things which are in common in 18 and 19. What are the common things? In this bracket, which is 2 r upon 1 minus r square, this bracket is common both in equation number 18 and equation number 19. These terms are getting repeated. Okay. This bracket is there in the numerator of 18 as well as in the denominator of 18. Similarly, this bracket is also there in the denominator of 19. It means that this has to do something like we can replace this bracket with some other parameter and then probably this relation will be simplified. We will do it later. Yeah. Now, if we assume that none of the incident energy is absorbed, the flux density of the incoming wave should exactly equal to the flux density of the flux density reflected of the film and the total transmitted flux density. But what I mean to say is that suppose a certain energy is falling in the uh, system in this uh, thin film and uh, a part will get reflected and a part will get transmitted. And if ray is not, if uh, the film is not absorbing any energy, then the reflected energy plus reflected intensity plus transmitted intensity would be equal to the incident intensity. Yeah, and this this relation holds if the film is non-absorbing. Okay, and this is what equation number twenty is saying. The incident in, in irradiance would be equal to the reflected irradiance plus transmitted irradiance. Okay. In this condition, if we want to ab observe maxima in transmittance, then let us go to equ uh, back to the equation number nineteen. And here we want to observe maxima or let us go to equation number 17. If we want to observe maxima in 17, then the denominator must be very small. Okay. To maximize i t, we must minimize the denominator in right hand side of equation number 17. How to do this? To minimize the denominator in 17, we know that r is fixed. Okay, small r is amplitude reflection coefficient, we cannot touch it. The phase is something which is varying, it is a variable. Okay. If we somehow play with this phase del and that leads to minimum denominator, then the i t would be maximized and what is the, uh, how to minimize then uh, this uh, del. Now, if we take del is equal to integral multiple of 2 pi, then cos del would be 1. Yeah, And if cos del is equal to 1, then this term will have its maximum value. And if this term has maximum value, therefore, whole denominator would be minimum. And if denominator is minimum, i t is maximum. Yeah, And therefore, we can say that if del is equal to integral multiple of 2 pi, i t maximizes, the transmitted intensity maximizes and it would be equal to i i. Okay. And at that time, there would be 0 intensity, there would be 0 radiance in reflected part. Okay. For minimum transmitted flux density, how to minimize transmittance? To minimize transmittance, we will have to maximize the 
denominator of equation number 17. To maximize it of course, cars del should cos cosine of del must be equal to minus 1 and for this del must be equal to 2 m plus 1 pi where m is an integer. Okay? It should be odd integer multiple of pi and uh, under this circumstances I uh, minimum irradiance would be given by equation number 22 okay? and the corresponding maximum um, um, the corresponding reflectance which would be of course, maximum at that time yeah? because the, uh, the, the, the sum of uh, uh, transmitted and the reflected irradiance is fixed. If the um, transmitted irradiance is minimizing then the of course, this in irradiances or intensities are going into the reflected arm okay? and since this energy this intensity is appearing in the reflected arm there would be max maxima in the reflection. Yeah? Let, let us try to understand it schematically, schematically this intensity is falling here I, I is falling and I r is getting reflected and I t is getting transmitted these are the transmitted reflected and incident irradiances or intensities. Now, as soon as I t decreases this part of intensity goes into I r arm and it will keep it will be increased because in uh, I t plus I r is equal to I i things are conserved. Therefore, when I t minimizes I r maximizes okay? and therefore, we can write uh, the maxima for a maxima condition for I r which is cos delta is equal to minus 1. Now, as I said before in equation number 18 and 19 1 minus r by sorry this uh, uh, bracket term 2 r by 1 minus r square is appearing several times and therefore, we define a term which is called coefficient of finness which is represented by capital F and is equal to square of 2 r upon 1 minus r square. Okay. With this introduction, if we again write equation number 18 and 19 which are given here, these are, this is equation number 18 and this is equation number 19. Let us rewrite equation 18 and 19 then we get a uh, better form of these two equations earlier they were looking bulky. Okay. Now, here again you see that the denominator of both equation number 24 and 25 they are same. Okay. Therefore, another definition is introduced uh, 1 by 1 plus f sin square del by 2 is replaced with italic a function of theta okay? and this is known as a re function italic a is known as a re function okay? and it represents the transmitted flux density distribution why because in equation number 25 if you re replace 1 by 1, 1 plus f sin square del by 2 with this italic a theta, then you see that a theta is nothing but italic a theta is nothing but the transmitted flux density distribution. Okay? And uh, in the equation number 25 on left hand side denominator, we have i i which is the incident irradiance. Therefore, equation 25 exactly represents the relative transmitted flux density. Okay. Now, for a plane parallel plate the fringes in the transmitted light will consist of a series of narrow bright rings on an almost completely dark back background. In reflected light the fringes would be narrow and dark on an almost uniformly bright background. How can I comment this? just plot equation number 24 and 25. How to plot them? Let us first plot equation number 25 which is nothing but a re function. Yeah? This is a i and what is 24? 24 if you see it closely then it is 1 minus italic a theta. Okay? Now, a theta is 1 by f sin square theta then 1 minus uh, a theta would be equation number 24. It means if I plot italic a theta and 1 minus italic a theta, then this will give us the 
in, uh, transmitted and reflected a radiance distribution. Okay. Let us plot them. Here a theta, italic a theta is plotted, italic a theta means i t by i i and 1 minus a theta is plotted here on the right hand side which, which means a r i i i r by i i is plotted here. Okay and these plots are for three different values of coefficient of thinness. Okay. The coefficient of thinness is defined here and for three values of coefficient of thinness we can see these three plot. On the horizontal axis del is plotted the phase difference. Okay. On the vertical axis uh, relative transmitted irradiance and relative reflected irradiances are plotted. Now, you see that for large value of coefficient of thinness, the irradiances first sharply drop down and then it becomes 0 and then it again reaches to maxima okay, and then again drops down and then it uh, uh, remains very low and then again goes uh, reaches to a maxima. A periodic uh, variation is found, okay. these are called fringes of course. Yeah. And if you increase the, if you decrease the value of f, then you see that the, the intensity variation or irradiance variation, they are not touching the 0. Okay. Fringes would still be there, but the difference between maxima and minima would be small. Okay. And as you go down in f coefficient of thinness, this difference reduces. Okay. Now, in this plot also, we see these peaks represent bright fringe, okay. this is the bright fringe and this part represent darkness. The bright fringes appear in the bright in the uh, background of darkness, while opposite happens for the reflected irradiance. Here what do we see is that for larger value of f, the intensity remains high or irradiance remains high for most of del and then it reduces down. Okay. Now, you see that the free, the, there is a the width of bright fringe is very wide, while the dark th fringe is very thin. So, here the dark fringes appear in the bright in the background of brightness, in, in the background of uh, brightness, dark fringes appear. Okay. And this is what this sentence said here, yeah. in transmitted light the fringes will consist of a series of narrow bright rings on almost completely dark background. And similarly in reflected light the fringes will be narrow and dark on an almost uniformly bright background. But the ring concept is still to be explained, why it is ring. Now you see that this is the phase, yeah. on the horizontal axis I am plotting the phase. Okay, and the fringe, this thin film is a three-dimensional object. Okay, and one light is being launched here, and multiple reflection and refraction is seen. You can rotate it in 3D. If you rotate this in 3D, then you will see that a ring is formed. Okay, if you rotate the angle, uh, the incident ray, in a like this is the film and this is the incident ray and these are the reflected and transmitted light. Okay. And then you can rotate it with a keeping this angle of incident fix and then you will see a ring type fringe pattern is being formed. Okay. Concentric ring pattern would be seen. Okay. In one case the width of the bright fringes would be sharp, in other case white bright fringes would be very wide. Okay and coefficient of fin thinness this the define now here the sharpness of these fringes. Okay. Now, having explained this a few concepts are still left, there are still few confusion, confusion which I see that it surface in the mind of uh, students. Okay. Now, in thin film interference uh, experiment we studied a thin film in previous classes too. Now, if you remember here we used one ray and we saw interference among different reflected rays, different, different reflected rays as well as different transmitted rays. 
in the previous classes we uh, exposed or uh, illuminated the fringe with an extended source okay and then rays from different directions and at different angle fell on the uh, film and then they produce some interference pattern now in this case where we just launch one ray and then uh, multiple coherent reflected and ref, uh, transmitted rays are generated and then they interfere. It is very much understood because all this reflected and transmitted rays they are getting generated from the same parent ray and therefore, they all are coherent and they are supposed to uh, interfere and give rise to sustained interference fringes. But here what you see since the source is extended here also we saw that we get uh, circular fringes okay if you remember but since the source is extended these rays are coming from different point sources which is constituting our extended source and since the rays are coming from an extended source extended source means very wide broad source and it, it has infinite many point sources which are totally uncorrelated with each other okay therefore the ray which is coming from this source is totally uncorrelated with the rays uh, coming from this source is totally uncorrelated with the rays coming from this source they all are mutually incoherent now the question arises how come a interference among incoherent rays giving rise to sustained interference fringes it is a big question yeah because from the very beginning of interference we demanded or we uh, studied that there are uh, certain guidelines to observe sustained interference fringes and what are the most important guideline the most important guideline is that interfering rays they must be they must maintain a constant phase difference okay the interference ray the interfering rays they must be coherent they must maintain a constant phase difference okay and then there are few other uh, criteria that they uh, must be equal to they must have almost same frequency same amplitude but they are subsidiary the most important part is that they must be coherent or they must maintain the same constant phase uh, difference now here we see that they are not coherent these rays are emanating from totally incoherent sources they, they, there is no relation between these two point sources or these two point so sources or any two point sources in, in an extended broad source and yet when this light fall on the this thin film we saw that they generate uh, very beautiful concentric uh, ring pattern and we call them fringes of equal inclination. Okay. How come we are getting this sustained fringes particularly they all comes in the domain of uh, interference where we have uh, mutually coherent sources, but with the incoherent sources we are getting sustained fringes. Okay. Now the explanation for this is as follows this is our film okay. this is certain thickness d now here we have extended source from which we are getting rays at different angles okay what happens here is that when these rays come it partially get reflected from here partially get transmitted and then it uh, get reflected from here too yeah. similarly another ray which is parallel to the first one it falls here it partially get reflected from here transmitted and then again reflected okay now uh, let us draw the another ray with another color Okay. Suppose this is the second ray which is falling at different angle. Okay. Now, these two rays they fell on the angle of incidence for these two rays were same here. This ray is coming at different angle and then the, this will go inside and then we will have a reflected rays out of it. Now, what happens here that although all these three rays ray number 1 ray number 2 ray number 3 they are mutually incoherent but 
out of frame number 1 the rays which are getting generated here in case of uh, uh, this reflected first ray which is E R 1 and E R 2 they are coherent because they are getting generated from the same ray the ray number 1 okay their origin is same they therefore they are mutually coherent and they will interfere and give rise to sustain interference fringes for only these two rays here yeah, e1 er1 and er2 they will give rise to sustain interference fringes okay similarly for ray 2 we are getting this reflected ray, this reflected ray, they two will give sustained interference fringes. Similarly, these blue rays, they will also give rise to sustained interference fringes. Okay? It means whatever pattern they are forming on the screen, be it dark, be it bright, it would remain dark and bright throughout. Okay? Now, the second concept is that the rays which are parallel among each other, okay, they will fall on the same circle. Okay. This, this, uh, the rays which are parallel, suppose the final pattern is concentric ring, then first two will fall on this circle. And this ray 2 is since parallel with ray 1, it will also fall somewhere on the same circle. Some other rays, say, ray number n, it is again parallel to ray number 1 or ray number 2, it will again generate two reflected and refracted ray and after uh, they will again fall on the same circle. Okay? It means all the rays which are parallel, which are getting generated from the this broad source, they will fall on the same circle and at their point of incidence they will generate some pattern and which will be sustained pattern okay at the uh, spot of falling they will generate uh, create some intensity distribution and that intensity distribution will be constant throughout time it would be a sustained interference interference fringe okay and the ray which is falling at different angle which is given here in blue color this ray in particular this will fall on different circle okay similarly a ray which is parallel to this blue ray this will again create a uh, ray and which after uh, reflection it will go through some lens and then they will overlap and they will again fall on the other circle okay it means each circle represents a parallel beam of light okay or alternatively in multiple beam interference in case of thin film which is illuminated by a broad source of uh, light a particular circle represents set of rays which fall at the same angle of incidence Okay. The blue circle is for angle of incidence theta 1, the re red circle is for angle of incidence theta 2 okay. and this is why even we do not have coherent sources, we get sustained interference fringe here, okay. very important concept. Okay. Now, this is all for today and thank you all for listening me, see you in the next class.